Greetings Glitter Gang and welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine and this is Christmas in July. We are making a series of wallets to go in a box. We'll also be making the box and right now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the construction for the six wallets. I'm going to show you how to do the construction of the wallets, how to make the templates, all that good stuff. So uh, right here is the wallet itself so this is the prototype we're gonna uh, get it figured out and then this is the modification for if you want to attach it to a binding um, the previous video in the series explains how to make that modification okay perfect so um, hello to everyone I hope you're all having a great afternoon let us now work on the the pieces and parts so let's go ahead and start with the front window so to make the front window we need one piece of six inch by eight inch cardstock one piece of four and three quarter by six and three quarter inch transparency and the pattern paper we will add in the matting phase so this pattern paper piece uh, is what goes it goes it gets adhered here to cover the strap um, so it's going to get added in the matting phase because we don't actually want to cover this, like, we don't want to cover this until the strap is on, basically. So we need six pieces of six inch by eight inch cardstock. So to do that, we're going to need three pieces of cardstock. Yes. Three pieces of cardstock. I am using Colormates Smooth and Silky in the color, color Olive. You can get this at thepapermillstore.com, thepapermillstore.com. And the easiest way to find it on the website is just to type Silky Olive into the search bar and it'll show right up. All right, so here are six, six inch by eight inch pieces. And then I also have these four by 12 pieces left over. I'm gonna just set them here because we might need them. All right, and so next what I wanna do is I wanna create a template for cutting the hole in the center of these. So I'm gonna cut myself a six inch by eight inch piece of cardstock just out of the craft and we're going to use this to make a template okay all right so we're going to draw lines one and a half inches in from each edge, all right? One and a half inches in from each edge. All right. And it's good to make the templates because then you know, if you make six and you end up needing seven or eight or however many, you can always come back and make more. Wait, sorry, it's not an inch and a half. It's actually just an inch. I forgot that I made it so that the flaps on this were only half an inch. It's just an inch. My bad. I'm so sorry. It's just an inch. Oops. All right. Thank you. 
All right, so what did everyone craft this week? I know you all were racing ahead with this project and getting all your wallets done over the weekend. Apps, that's definitely what happened, right? Gonna label my template. Um, just to let you know, I do have a 90% chance of thunderstorms between now and 4 p.m. So if the show ends abruptly, that's what happened. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to cut. And I'm just going to cut from this line to this line. So we're just making a window. Does the does the strap crinkle? Oh dear, not a crinkly strap. So maybe wallets, wallets are the way to go. Magnets, magnets are the way to go, perhaps, perhaps. Happy birthday to Ella. Ella is 18 with 52 years of extra experience. She's 18, but she's leveled up 52 times. Congrats, Ella, on all of your hard work and leveling up. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and I'm just going to trace all these. Uh, my wig was okay. It's just so, so brutally. <laughs> Candy says I used nested rectangle dies for this step. That's a smart use, especially if you have that uh, set that Spellbinders made for the cards because it has those decorative edges as well. It could look really cute. They have, um, they have an A4 card layering set or at least they um, did at one point at Spellbinders where they were made to make layers on the fronts of cards, but they have like decorative edges and stuff and that would be very cool on this. All right, so I've got these now all done. Now well, we don't have to cut them out right now because it's actually easier to do all our folding and scoring while they're uncut. It's just easier to trace them before they're scored. So because it's easier to trace them before they're scored, we're going to trace our template, then score, then cut because it's easier to cut after they're scored. So 
All right, so this is pretty simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in, um, and on the six inch side, we score at five inches. On the eight inch side, we score at seven and a half inches. All right, and then you're going to have something that looks like that. Alrighty. And, you know, because we are doing mass production, we're going to be doing the same thing repeatedly, but that's okay. And this is a nitpick, but it would actually be better if I scored them pencil side down so that when I cut the pencil, if there's any pencil left, it's on the back side of them. So I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch and score the unmarked side. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, might as well do it. Might as well do it right. These, it's not enough of a deal that I'm going to do anything to those try to redo them or anything. <laughs> so. uh, if you're also, if you don't have any nested rectangle dies, but you don't love how your craft knife work ends up looking, you could also use the Fiskars trimmer if you have the kind where you can start and stop the blade wherever you want to cut this window. That's also an option. Okay. All right, so those are all scored. So now I'm gonna fold along all the score lines and burnish. And this is the real reason why we haven't cut it yet because it is much easier to fold along the score lines and burnish while they still have their middles. weekend my sister and I are gonna get dressed up and go see the Barbie movie for funsies it's just been brutally 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 hot I just didn't have the movie theater parking lot in me. <laughs> That's how bad it is. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. And we have decided not to go on the um, averaged plan with the power company until we've had a year 
because we had a lot of problems with Tico, which is the Tampa Electric Company. We had a lot of problems with them always being wrong about how much we owed. They were, they were always short every single month. Um, and we owed them $1,800 when we left um, because that's how bad they are at estimating the, the, the power needs. Um, and even partway through the year, they said, we noticed you're getting behind. We're going to increase. And we're like, yes, please, we are begging you. <laughs> so um, anyway, so since they were a disaster, we decided to just pay, you know, whatever it is each month for the first year. And then after we've been here for a year, then we'll go on the budget plan. Because what the budget plan is supposed to do is kind of you know average the previous 12 months and then divide that or take take basically charge you the average per month of the previous year right so we're gonna try we're just gonna pay the first year so the july usage was like ouchy <laughs> ouchy ouchy um so I think the next one's going to be even worse. But the interesting thing about our current power company is they calculate your usage every single day. So you could actually go and look and, and it's in there almost immediately. They know um, pretty much like we can see what we spent on electricity yesterday. You know, so you could actually, so we've even run experiments about, well, how much does it save to use this AC this much versus this much, that kind of thing. Um, so, and it has a little thing in the, in there where it'll put a cloud next to the day. If the weather was a major factor in the, it having a price difference. So like if you have one day that's like, really high and you don't know why if there's a little cloud by it it'll just tell you you can click on that cloud and it'll tell you what the temperature was and how it's x much higher than the average or x much lower than the average so all that information is very helpful so we're you know we're doing our best but there's only so much you can do with 100 degrees you know there is only so much <laughs> so Yeah, the, the, the temperatures are bad this year, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it could also be that Tampa Electric Company is just uniquely terrible at this because um, they're the only electric company where we've owed almost $2,000 <laughs> on our budget plan when we left, you know, so they're definitely just terrible, um, you know, but just in case this company is also terrible we've decided to do it this way and I'm not conserving more than usual but you know we do try I know that um, heat is worse for the environment than air air conditioning or something like that there's something like it's it's better to cons be conservative if you're going to conserve one it's the heat that's better whatever um, something like that um, 
but um you know, I just try to be mindful. This is something we started in Miami, so we've been doing it since 2008, but, um, or 2009, but just because, you know, we didn't want $500 electric bills when we lived in Miami because you need AC. What the heck? <sighs> something wrong with this particular one. Gonna try recutting it a little bit outside the line and see if I can get rid of it. Well, this piece is jagged, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna try and tape that down so it doesn't look crooked. But anyway, we shall see. And then the big thing is going to be figuring out gas. So in Georgia, um, there is no, this is your gas company. So in most places where I've lived, essentially what happens is gas companies compete for city county contracts or whatever and then they're the gas company for the city county whatever where you live and then that that's just where you get your gas here that is not the case there's some little portal you go on and it has all the different gas companies listed that can provide you with gas and then you pick one and then that gas i don't know i don't know how it works Um, somehow you, you get that. I don't know. I assume it all just goes in a big gas pot and you know, whatever. But anyway, that's how they do it. So, um, right now we're on a, Hey, are you new to Georgia and you don't know what's going on here? Pick this plan plan that they have for people that you can have for your first two years. <laughs> and then after that, yeah, you have to, they said you just watch and like, watch what everyone's charging for gas and you can bounce bounce between plans or whatever which is wild so anyway <laughs> so that is upcoming i guess that'll be more of a problem in the winter because we are not using um anything other than the water heater the water heater is the only gas right now because there's no gas in the kitchen which i find interesting uh it's not it's not just that there's like an electric stove in there there's no gas line in there so we'd have to have if we want a gas in the kitchen we'd have to have someone run a gas line through the uh, crawl space to the kitchen So we will probably just do induction. Just keep doing induction. We already have all the pots and such that you need for induction. So we mostly cook in enamel cast iron anyway. Which is pretty great on induction. So, because we have a freestanding induction cooktop that we use as a secondary gr griddle or range or whatever. Well, yeah, that's why we decided we would just go to induction, Gretchen. 
because that way we don't have to keep on top of whatever the law is and you know just get an induction range but yeah there's a gas furnace but no gas and a gas the hot water heater is gas but no gas in the kitchen which is interesting I know some people just don't like the way it makes the house smell um, we do like cooking with gas it's more responsive but again induction is very responsive as well um, so it's really just you know pretty much everything's better than electric coils Beach mom turned 75 and I got her, the New York Times will make a book for people's birthdays with every, um, we have the, the duck's top, I think, Duke's top. D-U-X-T-O-P. That's the one we have. And we have the two burner ones. So. Um, I'll go quickly put it in the. The thing. The, the ideas list. It works great. Um, and the big thing is the house is so cool. Like I, we try, basically we have a countertop convection oven and we have a countertop induction cooktop and we use those. Those are our primary, um, things that we use. And then, um, as backup, we use the wall ovens and the electric range. So um, we're really just, uh, because the induction cooktop, of course, is so much more efficient than the range um, and the convection, the countertop convection oven is so much more efficient than the, um, than the wall ovens. So we have barely used the wall ovens. They still look brand new, actually. Um, and that's just how we've always been. We've always just preferred. The convection oven cooks better for starters. Um, and it cooks faster. Um, and it doesn't heat the house in the same way, which is great in the summer. All right. So I'm adding the exact cooktop that we have to the Catherine Scraps ideas list. All right, so it's now there. So if you click in this video description, uh, you will see it there. So down in this video description, uh, if you're watching live on YouTube or if you're watching, if you're watching on YouTube at all, in the description of this video will be a link to my ideas list, which has the tools and stuff that I use and I have added the cooktop, so. All right, but yeah, okay. All right, so now that we've got all our windows cut, okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the tape around our windows for the, um, for the, uh, transparency. And then we'll cut and add our transparency.
All right, have fun, Dar. Enjoy painting the beach. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. I hope we have a great time dressing up. I have a pink wig and everything. I'm ready. Yeah, convection ovens for roasting, they really, really do such a good job. Of course, everyone knows like for baking that they, they give you really nice evenly browned cookies and whatever and that is true but for roasting meats they really shine for roasting meats um, and air fryers if you like air fryers air fryers are just small convection ovens that's what they are so if you have an air fryer and you really enjoy your air fryer you are probably someone um that would benefit from having a countertop convection oven or eventually upgrading your wall ovens to convection ovens although that's way more expensive than just getting a countertop one um, and the uh, breville convection oven that we have actually makes baskets uh, so that you can do all the air fryer stuff in it that slide right onto the rack. So you just pull out the racks that you would put pans on and you put in these mesh baskets for air, for air frying and you can use it as an air fryer. So you don't have to have a separate air fryer, which is nice. And it's big enough to hold uh, some nine by 13 pans. Uh, we've just learned that as long as the pans don't have really too big of handles, we can usually use them and it'll hold quarter sheet pans as well. So there's actually quite a bit we can do even though it's just a countertop oven. Um, the only thing we really can't put in it is anything that would need a half sheet pan or that would need something bigger than a 9 by 13 9 by 13 tray, which is not very many things not very many things at all yeah we'll have to take some barbe photos We'll see if the heat gets away ahead of us again <laughs> or not. Because the heat is the reason why we have not been to Barbie yet. <laughs> so, All right, so here's my little stack the, of scraps. I'm going to keep these to the side here because there may be things like straps and loops later we can use them for. In the meantime going to burnish all these tapes. And then we'll make our transparency. So those are ready to go. So now we just need our transparency. So let's pull out our measurement list again and get the measurement for the transparency. So for this, it says uh, front window four and three quarters by six and three quarter T. So that's the transparency. So four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So we can get two out of an eight and a half by 11 sheets. So we're gonna need three sheets of transparency. One, two, three, three sheets. Okay. 
All right, so now I'm gonna take these three sheets and I'm gonna cut them in half at five and a half and then I can trim them down to size. And I have to cut these one at a time because they're so slippery. So it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. One. Okay, so just three more, and then we got it. Yeah, you can usually count on a movie theater to be air conditioned, but this particular theater has a concrete parking lot and just it's just brutal to walk across. <laughs> I'm just so weak. I'm so weak. Now we can attach these. <laughs> well, it's so funny because my sister said that she would uh, drop me off at the door. <laughs> so. But then she got too hot and didn't want to go, so. <laughs> I wasn't the only one the heat overcame.
All right, last one. Okay. All right, so now all I have to do is just center these. Exactly, then I have a, well, and it's funny because part of the reason the parking lot is such a big deal is because we found um, this place in the parking lot where you can park where the car won't get hot because there's some trees there, but then that does mean that you are parking fairly far away from the door, and so your walk across the parking lot is extended, so it's like, you know, you can either crawl across the... <laughs> the super hot parking lot or you can ropes alive in the car when you get out I mean really those are your your two choices running a pink car would be funny but I don't think that was uh, on the agenda Um, but yeah, we have a, we have a blonde wig and we have a, uh, an ombre p uh, pink wig. So we are ready. So one of us can wear pink with the blonde wig and I might wear the pink wig with like a rainbow, more rainbowy outfit. We'll see. We just want to be very bright and colorful. All right, so now they're all done. They're all windowed. So the last thing we need to do is we need to add tape to um, both short sides and one long side on one side. Oh yeah, it is much hotter in Texas. The, tec the Texans are melting. The Texans are melting. So on the front, on three sides, and on the back, on the one side. And what I'm going to do is just quickly do the backs. So my sister and I are going to get into, as just like a fun, silly hobby, we got a set of gouache paints and a book on gouache painting 101 or gouache. It's um, like a cross between an acrylic and a watercolor. Um, so it's matte finish, like a watercolor, not shiny like acrylic, but you can, you know, um, you can, uh, Uh, it's not as wet as watercolor, so it's a little more user friendly than watercolor is. So anyway, we've got like a 101 beginner's guide to, and we're going to work our way through the book. And we've decided we're going to just stick with each lesson until we feel like we've really got it, you know, before we move on to the next lesson. And we're just going to have, we're going to try and do a, afternoon painting once a week so 
for just fun just to be fun just to be bad at it you know it's important to take joy in doing things you're bad at i think that prevents us that can prevent us at least i know with me that i you know have a tendency towards perfectionism that where i get discomfort if i'm if i feel like i'm bad at something but like you can't become good at something unless you sit with being bad at it you know what i mean so the importance of being bad at hobbies i think is something that's lost so she and i are coming up with hobbies to be bad at so we're going to start with gouache painting and then once we've worked our way through the book we figure there's got to be tons of tutorials classes etc on youtube that we can search for but we did want to just kind of start with something to very simple teach fundamentals we can work our way through so our first lesson is actually going to be negative space and using negative space to make patterns and our first lesson is to make a coffee cup Um, and it's to make, to, to learn it both ways. So one way will be to where the negative space is the coffee cup itself. So we're, we'll be creating a coffee cup by painting like shadow around it, which will make the coffee cup look like it's there. And then painting a pattern on the coffee cup where the pattern is the part that's colored. And then the other lesson, the flip side of that is where the background, where the coffee cup is painted um, and the pattern is not painted, so the pattern is, appears white. So that's the first lesson. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. So that's what we'll be working on first. And so my sister said we're going to have so many <laughs> coffee cups to decorate our coffee bar, which is so true. <laughs> because, uh, you know, until we really feel like we get it, you know, we're just going to keep painting coffee cups. And they're just going to go from... Well, hopefully they'll go from worse to bad, um, you know, <laughs> hopefully they will be an, an improvement of sorts. OK, so now on the side where you have the one piece by itself, we're going to cut the corners. And when you cut the corners, you want to remove the score lines. So you want to cut past the score lines so that the score lines are with the piece that's removed. So that what remains behind is perfectly straight and there's no rolled or scored edge. All right, so people, uh, people in the chat are posting the things they're bad at. So Ella is bad at crocheting and so is uh, Melanie, apparently. So um, crocheting is on our list. You know, it's on our list. Also, maybe knitting. Gretchen says that's something they don't let kids do anymore. Just have fun with something. Everyone is so competitive. If they're not good, they stop or get kicked out. Exactly. Well, and there's such a push to monetize everything where it's like, do you have a hobby? Do you have something you're good at? You know, make videos about it. Sell merch teach a online class and like I know you know this is what I do but I'm here to tell you that that does ruin your hobby um so you know if you have a hobby you enjoy that you're good at like it's not enhanced by turning it into a business um so I can tell you like I'm not saying don't do it I'm not discouraging people from doing that if that's what you want to do, but I am just letting you know, you will need a new hobby. <laughs> you will need a new hobby because you won't have a way to decompress, you know? Uh, 
Um, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. Once you've turned your, once you've monetized your hobby, your hobby is now a job. And it may just be a side hustle and it may be a low stress job, but it's now a job. You know, it's not, it's not going to be the way you unwind after a long day anymore. Because it, it loses that, as Gretchen says, it loses the stress relieving component. Um, and so anyway, so yeah, so we're going to just be bad at gouache painting. And then if it, if we finish our book and we're like, that's enough of that, you know, this is not the hobby for us, then we'll try something else. You know, maybe we'll try crochet, maybe we'll try knitting. Let's, we, you know, we'll figure it out, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna have fun. The goal is just to paint really terrible coffee mugs for a while. All right, so now you just fold that back over on itself and that's gonna give you a nice clean edge to get attached to your book okay so we're just going to fold those all over so uh, candy says during covid lockdowns they did family paint sessions where they all watched an online class and all painted the same picture it was fun and none of them were good at it that's exactly what we're hoping for <laughs> we're hoping to be fun regardless of whether or not we're good at it and if we're frustrated by not being good, we're just going to remind ourselves that, you know, it takes like 10,000 hours to really be good at something. And it doesn't make sense to be good at painting immediately. Like it literally doesn't make sense. All right, so now that we're at this stage where we have that one edge folded over, now we just need to snip these corners, all right, so that these can be attached to the book. So basically what I'm going to do is the, in the X formed by the score lines, so you can see there's like an X here formed by the score lines, I'm just going to cut through the center of the X and that is going to remove pretty much a 45 degree angle. All right, so here we go. All right, so these are now ready to get attached to the wallets. So we've done all of the assembly to the point of where they're going to be attached and now we just need something to attach them to so we're going to go ahead and move along to the next phase of the project which is well i said the back pocket but let's do the wallet itself so we need a piece that's 11 by 7, 11 by 7. So we need six of those to give us something to attach it to the front of. All right, so I'm going to get six more sheets of the olive cardstock. All 
All right, so we're, we've used nine so far. All right. Eleven by seven. Here is three of them. But yeah, I do think that, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being good at things or monetizing your hobbies or any of that. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you're gonna need some kind of hobby that is a just pure stress relief, just your happy place which you do for fun. And if it's a new skill, you know you're going to be bad at it. I look back at what my scrapbooks looked like when I first started. They're not going in a magazine. <laughs> they are not. So, all right. Three more for a total of six. So we'll get our scoreboard back. All right. So these are gonna get scored down the middle so I'm just going to center these. And I'm going to score them down the middle. And then they get flipped end over end and scored a half inch on either side. Okay, so five. Well, hopefully, I just make it till the end of the show, you know. It's, we only have a few minutes left. It's just got to hang it, just got to hang in there, internet. Just got to hang in there. Yeah. I used to cross stitch. That's another thing I've considered when I'm thinking about getting a new hobby. I did get a cross stitching app and it's been fun. Obviously drastically different skill level. But yeah, I did counted cross stitching. That was a hobby I had in high school because I was cool and hip. But I'd also like to know, you know, brush up on sewing, basic mending. I'd like to know some simple embroidery, especially that could be used to like mend or fix garments, things like that. So, you know, like there's a lot of things on our list to try and we're just going to try them, you know, 
one at a time until we know is this for us if so maybe we'll upgrade some supplies uh, if not we'll try something else you know but we want to give them each a few months of course you know to really give it a try because while some people may be naturally talented at things even people who are naturally talented at them have to work very very hard to become very good you know there's no one who's you know yeah candy well i've said this before um maybe on the show maybe not but in my opinion um home ec and auto shop should still be taught um, the problem was not that they were taught. The problem was that they were taught in a gendered way. Everyone should go to home ec and everyone should go to auto shop. And that's how it should be, that, in my opinion. I do think that not having home ec in particular is a real, um, is a real problem. Um, because auto, auto shop... Um, you know, I do think it's worthwhile for everyone to know how to change a car light bulb, how to change a car oil, how to change a car tire, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, that's all very useful, but they do now make things that make it very easy to change your oil at home. They have these, um, they have these machines now that you can just use that just suck all the oil out of the car and then you just pour the new oil in like you don't have to get under the car and empty it into a pan and all of that so like there are ways to very easily change your oil at home and things like that so god that technology is kind of advanced you know to where you can do a lot of that stuff at home way easier than than you used to be able to and you know, you can buy the diagnostic little machine that tells you what your check engine light means and all that kind of stuff. So auto shop, like not as much because of the increased complexity of cars, but also the increased availability of things to work on cars with. But home ec, I think, is a real problem. You know, like there are people who go off to college, they don't know how to do laundry, you know. All right, so. Now that we've got these to this stage, these get attached so that this edge is on the open edge, okay? So our folded over edge goes on the open edge. Yeah, everyone should know how to make a few basic dishes to feed themselves, absolutely. Well, Mr. Lifeguard has talked about uh, this before. You know, he actually, took home ec in high school so um he didn't first he didn't, either didn't want to take auto shop or it was shop was conflicted with a class i don't remember what the deal was but for some reason he ended up in home ec instead of in shop and he is still to this day proud of the fact that his final project was a pair of shorts that actually fit him and that he could wear that he made completely himself so you know he appreciated everything he learned and he can cook and he can balance a budget and he can do his own laundry like he can do all of that he was he was totally able to do all that stuff when i met him you know so um yeah like it actually does help the banking part absolutely yeah see candy i went on so candy said she worked with a woman who had to write directions on how to cook canned beans and reheat frozen pizza for her husband before she went on a road trip for work that kind of that situation i never had to be i was never faced with that situation personally because again mr lifeguard was a fully functional adult when i met him um but i remember a friend of mine and i we were, went on a retreat with some people that we weren't like we the, this retreat was like the first time we were meeting them but they were a group of friends and one of them was like joking about all the meals and things she was having to prepare in like the group chat ahead of time all the meals and things that she had to prepare for her husband and she was like making like two weeks worth of freezer meals and all of this and i was just like if he's 
so incompetent he can't feed himself. He can make a peanut butter sandwich twice a day. Like, I don't understand. You know what I mean? I was like, just he can just make a peanut butter sandwich twice a day. You know, like, if he has never taken the time to learn how to do any of this, that's on him, you know, because did he go straight from his mother's house to his wife's house? Was there no point in time where he was responsible for feeding himself? I doubt it. So he just, like, has regressed somehow or whatever. And so I was like, no, Pete. Two loaves of bread, two jars of peanut butter. Bye, I'm out. <laughs> you know, so. Now, for the women who have kids who don't trust their husbands to feed the kids, that's slightly different, you know. But if it's just the man by himself... He can just eat peanut butter. <laughs> Gretchen says sometimes when she goes on retreats, older women ask her what Dave's eating while she's gone. And she says, I don't know. That's his problem. Yeah. Like he's an adult man. He knows how to, how to eat food. So anyway, I think that home ec is the more important one if we're going to bring one back because there are more kind of tools and other things for the cars and cars are so complicated now that there's only so much you can kind of do on your own anyway. All right, let's see. For the first couple of years that I went on my annual scrapbook retreat, I got freezer meals for hubby and the boys, and they know how to make grilled cheese and spaghetti, and they just brought fast, bought fast food instead. Yeah, why not? They, I mean, it's kind of fun when, you know, mom's away to, for dad and the kids to eat some fast food, like, here and there, you know. Pat says... My father could make a cup of tea in the microwave. Everything else was women's work. He stayed out of the kitchen. That was that generation. Yeah, there are generational differences for sure. <laughs> My son-in-law's parents were very creative cooks, so we taught him a lot. Although he's had some bumps in the road. Well, cooking is hard. It's an important skill, and it's like many things. It takes a lot of time and effort to get good at it. You know, it does. It really does. Um, like... Like all skills, you know. Well, it's funny because um, Donna's talking about how her dad didn't even know what cabinets the dishes were in, and he was totally lost when uh, her mom died. Um, we, my sister and I had to go to a talk on how to be a trustee for a trust, um, that our parents lawyer put on. Um, so we went to it and we did learn a lot, but one of the things that they warned about in the class was the overly competent spouse. They said that you should analyze your relationship for an overly to, and if there's an overly competent spouse that has to be eliminated uh, which was so interesting um so and they were specifically talking about how like if the overly competent spouse dies first it's a disaster for the estate and all of that so yeah, Gretchen has, Gretchen says that she has to be eliminated and she's okay with that. Yeah. You got to go tell your husband that you have to be eliminated. You have to be equally competent spouses, but they were talking about how it's a real 
problem if the overly competent spouse dies first. If the overly competent spouse dies second, it doesn't, obviously it doesn't matter because they will take care of anything that needs to be taken care of when the incompetent spouse dies. <laughs> but um, the, it's, they said, you don't want this situation. Like you don't want to take that chance. And they said, if you're here as like the child of a couple with an overly competent spouse, you need to encourage your parents to like, they got to get it together, you know, um, or all of the information has to be passed by the overly competent spouse to the children before, you know, before, um, so that the children can fill in the gap, you know, but yeah, like they were talking about how this is one of the biggest problems when a spouse dies is, is they have too much institutional knowledge of the relationship and the finances and all, and where the things are and all of that stuff, you know. Oh, wow, Gretchen, that's, yeah, yeah. See, exactly. You, everyone needs to be able to, to do everything. Now, everyone doesn't need to be able to do everything the exact same way, you know, to the exact same level. But, like, for example, when we were growing up, we were not allowed to drive the family cars alone until we could change the tires on all of the family cars. That was just something my dad required us to be able to do before we could drive the cars by ourselves and you know this was before cell phones were were really good you couldn't count on being able to call roadside assistance from a cell phone when i was 16 years old okay um you would have to in almost all situations you would have to like walk to a pay phone or hitch a ride to a payphone and then call from a payphone and then, you know, try to meet the roadside assistance people back out where the car was and know what mile marker of what road you were on and all that jazz. So I thought it was very smart what he did. And I, I did. I could change the car, the tire on every single car that we had. And in fact, like physically had to change them. I couldn't just walk through the steps. Like I had to jack the cars up by myself. I had to get the uh, spares out of the trunks. I had to pull the real tires off. I had to put the spares on. I had to put the, it all back the way I found it. I had to be able to do all that before I could drive the cars alone. And I think that was smart. And I think that that kind of thing is, is kind of lost these skills, these life skills. And I don't know, I don't think anyone's better for it. So the moral of the story is be bad at things and be okay with that. <laughs> it's okay to be bad at things. Be bad at things, learn, have fun. All right? Whatever it is, whether it's crafting <laughs> or changing tires or whatever, cooking, whatever. You can't be good at things unless you're bad at them first. All right. So here we are. So we now have our pockets on our wallets. So the next stage will be, and this is what we'll start with when we come back tonight, the next phase will be to do the insides of the wallets and then the backs of the wallets. So when we get back tonight, we're going to start with the two pockets that go on the inside. And then if there's time, we'll do the pockets that go on the back and the loop closure and all of that. But if there's not time, then there's not time. We'll see how far we get. But this is good progress. We've got six wallet base is made. We've got the front pockets on them. When we come back, we'll do the inside pockets and the back pockets. So I'll be back tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern USA time. That's roughly five hours from the time that it is now, wherever you are. For those of you who are overseas and are headed to dinner or headed to bed, I hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend. Try to stay cool. Try to stay hydrated. Try to stay footloose and fancy free. And for the rest of you, I hope you have a great afternoon. I'll see you back here tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern USA time. Have a great afternoon, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.